Hi folks, this is Rockman Pat with another one of our GeoTalks. I am here in the middle of the Absaroka Mountains. Now, the Absaroka Mountains are all volcanic and uh, they stretch for hundreds of miles. This is a massive formation. It forms the eastern border of Yellowstone Park uh, and the northeast, somewhat of the north of Yellowstone Park, and it is comprised primarily of volcanic muds and uh, volcanic rock and lava mixed with petrified trees and uh, is several thousand feet uh, of this kind of stuff. Now, give you a kind of an idea how big this is. Geologists have located what they think are about 15 eruptive centers throughout the Absarokas. And so this lava was about the consistency of Mount St. Helens. So it is classed as um, andesitic lava, just like Mount St. Helens. So picture this area with 15 Mount St. Helens going off simultaneously. So erupting all kinds of ash and rock and uh, dust into the air. Of course, a lot of water vapor with that mixing all together and forming this soupy mud mixed with the lavas, exactly what happened with Mount St. Helens, only on a much, much smaller scale. But this is the Absarokas. Now, the Absaroka is a very interesting name in and of itself. It comes from a, uh, a Crow Indian word, Absaluka. The French traders got it all confused and discombobulated, misunderstood the Crow Indians and thought that that was calling them the crows or, or children of the black bird. But in reality, Opsaluka means children of the big beaked bird and the crows consider themselves very closely allied with a creature that looked much like the pteranodon, so children of the big beaked bird. Anyway, one of the derivatives of the Absaluka is Absaroka, and that's what these mountains are named. Part of these were part of the original Crow Indian tribe uh, in the 1800s. Now, let me show you a little bit of the rock. It's kind of got a brown color, not that gray color of Mount St. Helens because of all the mixture of mud and uh, in it. But let me show you this stuff here. This is called a volcanic breccia. And a breccia is really a uh, kind of a ground mass made of, of angular bits and pieces of other kind of rocks. So here you see it uh, in here. And this is what this is all made of. This particular piece of volcanic breccia is uh, has some wood casts in it. So here's a cast of some petrified wood uh, along with this little piece over here. So there are tons of this kind of thing in the Absaroka Mountains. This is really a petrified uh, mash of mud, petrified wood, uh, volcanic rocks, and uh, bits and pieces of lava. So it's really a, a mess of stuff. And that's what forms the Absarokas. Later, um, towards us at the end of the flood, of course, when all the volcanoes were going off, later the great ice event took place and began to sculpt these mountains. Lots of flooding took place and uh, carved a lot of these mountains. That's why they're so jagged and interrupted from side to side but then left the Shoshone River off to the side here as a remnant. Geologists still claim that the Shoshone River was the cutting agent. I don't think so. This is too big. This is the remnant of what took place here.